Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tropecast. This is the first episode of 2020 and we continue from where we left off before Christmas and the New Year's. Okay, so we're now on the F tropes in series one beginning and I've chosen first episode resurrection tropes. So let's start with anime and manga. Spoilers ahead. This is the basis for Hero's servitude in Hime, not to Hime, in Princess Resurrection. Hero dies saving Hime, and she brings him back to life. The catch is that he has to be her servant forever protecting her from all the dangerous all the dangers that come with the job this makes him effectively immortal being able to heal from any injury as long as he gets regular blood donations from Hime if he doesn't he dies yeah charming Okay, Genkaku Picasso starts with our uh, hero, in quotes, Hikari getting killed by a helicopter crash and resurrecting thanks to his only friend, Chiaki, who did die, getting the gods to keep him alive in exchange for using his new powers to help others. Chiaki also comes back, but as more of a guardian angel than an all-living person. One of the first and most infamous examples was actually from the Ma- a Magical Girl series. Magical Princess Minky Momo, and it was more of a first episode reincarnation, but still. Ceres from Helsing was being held hostage by a vampire priest, and Alucard asked if she was a virgin when she said yes. He shot through her to hit the priest. As she was dying on the ground, he offered her a choice between death and becoming a vampire like him. Ceres thought she was going to pull a heroic sacrifice to stop the vampire priest. Alucard had a million ways he could have avoided killing her and taken out the priest, but just one that allowed him to sire a new vampire. Initially, Ceres is very unhappy as a creature of the night. No one has any idea why Alakar bothered to turn her, and he won't give a straight answer, a significant through line of the series is her coming to terms with her power and figuring out why on earth she caught his eye. Yakumo from Three Times Three Eyes. Yasuki from Yu Yu Hakusho dies in the first episode but it takes an entire arc for him to come back to life with supernatural powers. You can tell the author loves this trope, considering that the series begins with the narration. This is Yasuki Urameshi. He's 14 years old. He's supposed to be the hero of this story, but unfortunately, he's dead.
The original idea for the ser for this series was actually a punk ghost boy floating around and undergoing character development while trying to earn his life back. This apparently got boring, and the hooks for it as an extended process were cut short. Yasuki abruptly came back to life, and the manga became a fighting series instead, turning some of the beginning into broken Aesop stuff. Then it was going to be a series of short case storylines with hooks for that in the form of the spirit tools, which Yasuki was supposed to get more or more of as he could handle that, handle them. Then all was devoured by tournaments. Bleach somewhat changes the order around. Ichigo intentionally stabs himself with Rukia's empathetic weapon to temporarily gain her Shinigami powers. Sooner, from Katakayo Hitman Reborn, of course Reborn is the same gender as him, not to mention one year old, and Suna gets a first episode resurrection about once an episode, thanks to Reborn's dying Will Bullets. Reborn kills him, rather than resurrecting him. Also, he's been a year old for a long time now. <laughs> what? Hash slash Tasagari no Udiwa Densetsu begins with Shugo dying and being given the eponymous Twilight Bracelet by Aura. Note though that he died in a computer game, not the real world. It's more of a respawning than a resurrection it's not a bit more believable no so it's a bit more believable dot hack slash roots begins the same way birdie the mighty it happened to sutamu senkawa after the titular space cop accidentally killed him and merges with him to save his life. Though depending on which version you watch, how far into the first episode he dies varies. In the OVA he dies within the first few minutes, while in Decode he dies after the first episode is halfway through. Spoofed in XL Saga when XL gets hit by a bus at the start of the first episode and the great will of Mac uh, Macrocosm has to resurrect her after chastising XL for getting killed in the first episode. XL then gets killed mostly by Lord to Palazzo and resurrected three more times before the episode is finished. Shiro from Face Day Night Though he didn't actually die, he was taken for dead by both his attempted killer And the one who tried to revive him. The first episode of Gungrave, Destroyer in the Dusk, shows Brandon Heat, freshly resurrected as Beyond the Grave, in action 
and the rest of the series is an extended flashback of Heat's mortal life until it catches up with the first episode. In the first episode slash chapter of the Happy World manga and OVA, the main characters... Why are there so many, like, blank spaces in these? You can't read it if it's blank. The Soul Taker does this with a twist. The absolute first scene, prior to even the opening credits, has our hero, Kayasuki, that Kayasuki date, killed by his mother in a church for seemingly no reason. The next scene revol- involves a girl we have no knowledge of. Pulling up out of a coffin in the ground. It's later explained blank. The actual big bad in the series blank. UFO Princess Valkyrie. Series protagonist Kazuto Tokino. Getting crushed by a landing UFO and resurrected by its pilot, who is unsurprisingly a Valkyrie princess. Granted, we don't really get the whole story of it till episode 2, but it is seen in a flashback near the end of the first episode. After accidentally killing the main characters of Ultimate Girls, UFO Man sacrifices much of his power and energy to resurrect them, which has the side effect of shrinking his body. Monaco from Living Dead comes back to life as an intelligently aware, flesh-eating zombie in the first chapter. Kazuki Muto of Buso Rank, uh, Rankin sacrifices his life to protect a girl he's just met when she is attacked by a monster, embarrassingly enough. Tokiko happens to be an extraordinary, extraordinarily empowered girl who was just playing helpless to bait out of the monster, yeah, to bait out the monster. But, um, but fortunately she feels badly enough about his death. That she uses her arms, alchemy, to resurrect him. Now he's got an alchemical stone for a heart. Would you be surprised if I told you that it gave him superhuman powers? Not really, that's how a lot of animes go. So. The main character of Kashimashi Girl Meets Girl dies after being hit by a spaceship, but is brought back to life as a girl instead of a boy. Huh? Happens to Kate, Ro- Kate Rose, Claire and Rachel in Red Garden. Inverted. In Tsukihime, ordinary high school student, kills a supernatural being, who then resurrects herself, and the series becomes centred on their adventures together. This happens in bludgeoning angel Dokuro-chan. But it is a subversion both because Dokuru is the one who kills Sakura and she, and she kills him in almost every episode, sometimes more than once. The hero of Black God technically doesn't die, but since he lost an arm, The bleeding would have killed him if Kuro 
hadn't taken matters into her own hands. Gantz, every character dies before we meet them. When they all meet for the first time, they go around the room giving names and method of death. This is established by the first episode's graphical death of Corono and Cato and their expository, uh, yeah, expository resurrection by Gans. After that, it becomes easy to assume every new character had died, blank. Angel Beats begins with Otanashi dying and arriving in the afterlife. More like getting up after dying, then dying again, twice. Shinderi Shouju to Kadoku na Shinigami. Nishigami accidentally pushes Akira off a tall cliff. In the first chapter, she is revived as an immortal being by, a, by the snake god at a steep price, mostly because she didn't want Nishigami to blame himself for her death. Immortal Regis Parodied in Ben 2, the first episode begins with the main character Sato lying on the ground, or Sato lying on the ground as the narration explains that this is the day he died. A minute into the posthumous narration, however, his stomach grumbles and he stands up to get some food. It's at this point that the onlookers realise he isn't actually dead and call an ambulance. That's not really a resurrection then, is it? He, he didn't even get killed. The first episode of High School DXD has Isai um Hayudu murdered by his ex-girlfriend, a fallen angel named Rainer, and then revived by Rias Grimori as one of her servant devils, Blank. Mawaru Penguin Drum Hyman Taka Takakura dies of her weak heart and is revived by a spirit that resides in her penguin hat. It makes sense in context. UQ Holder opens with the protagonist Tuta or, or Tauta being made immortal by another already immortal character. Given that immortality is a primary theme of the series, it isn't surprising. At the end of the first episode of Valvrav the, the Liberator, Haruto accepts the Valvrav AI's contract to pilot the Mecha, after stopping Dorsey's attack, he steps out of the machine, only to be brutally stabbed by L.E. Oh, by L. Elf, and then shot a few times at the point blank range for good measure. Blank. Okay, uh, Sakura Minant. Min Minamoto in Zombieland Saga opens a series, leaving her house on the way to an idol tryout. 
and is promptly hit by a truck, she suddenly comes into a spooky looking manor with five zombie girls awakening around her. After escaping and encountering a policeman, he panics and she sees in, in a nearby traffic mirror that she herself is now a zombie. Exemplified even further when the policeman shoots her in the chest and she hardly feels anything or see blood coming out of her body though she doubles over. Wow, okay, that's heavy. Comic books. Okay, here we go. In the DCU, this was the key trope in the origins of uh, for Deadman and the Spectre, at least before the latter was retconned as something completely different. DC's 1990s series Artemis, Requiem, had a non-standard version. Artemis had been dead in the underworld for a while, but at the end of the first issue, she clawed her way out of hell and back to earth in the process of rescuing her naive, reckless superhero sister, who had come to the underworld looking for her. Something like this happened in the second Supergirl. Although in this case she was the unnatural character who got merged with a dying human. So that's not exactly the same thing. Drax the Drax the Destroyer was raised from death by Kronos and Mentor in order to defeat Thanos in Marvel Comics. Possibly a subversion in that almost nothing of Mr. Douglas's personality remains. Drax is a giant green humanoid with energy powers and about the same level of intelligence as that other giant green humanoid from Marvel. What, you mean the Incredible Hulk? Why don't you just name it? Drax began with all his memories and personality intact. Unfortunately, in helping the Avengers stop his daughter, Moondragon, from mentally enslaving a world she destroyed his mind, resulting in his second resurrection, having the Green Hulk level mind. She eventually sacrificed some of her mental powers in order to restore him to near normal. Ghost Rider 2099 marginally qualifies. Ken Shiro Zero Cochrane is dying while connected to the net and willing to upload his brain patterns as a device to delete information. He doesn't want to be collected. Post mortem Uber uh, Uber AIs catch him instead and rebuild as a robotic anti-hero. The question experiences a non-supernatural version. In the first issue, the angry two-fisted Ditko Avenger is defeated by Lady Shiva or Lady Shiva, beaten with a pipe, shot in the head with an air gun, and dumped into and dumped in the river. Due to the million to one chance and the diving reflex, he survives, but the near death experience changes his philosophical outlook. The very first panels of Lazarus have main character 
Forever Carlisle being shot multiple times and killed. As the series is set at least four decades in the future, and Forever is majorly bio-enhanced, she promptly begins healing from her wounds, comes back and kills her attackers. This turns out to be little more than an establishing character moment, and then the story begins properly getting underway. Dusk in Slingers, although technically she died in the Zero Issue preview that came with Wizard Magazine. Bernie offers resurrection to certain characters in Deb Vigil. Vigil. In exchange for helping her fight. Eldritch. Abomination. From beyond reality, both protagonists accept her offer. Okay. Famworks. This is a very short one, this category. The A New Child series starts out towards the end of the Pokemon Heroes. Of Pokemon Heroes. When Latios died, saving the city of Alto Mare. But a soul bonding technique with Ash and Latias revives him. For the rest of the, the rest of the fic deals with Ash with the Eon Dragons during the rest of the Johto Saga. The second chapter of Mother Cognitive Dissonance begins with Larisse, a starman who attempted to reason with the Giju or Gigu only to be attacked and killed by him booting back up. Quicken in the first episode Emma died after a brutal fight against several thugs. However she triggered in universe speak for gain powers Due to a traumatic experience, right before dying, and her powers brought her back to life. Okay. Animated films. And there's only... What the hell? There's only one example here. Rise of the Guardian starts with Jack Frost apparently being born from the water of a frozen pond. Even though it isn't explained until late in the movie that he drowned slash froze to death in that pond. And was brought back to life with powers by the moon. The opening scene still kind of makes it obvious that's what happened. Okay, so that's it for this episode, guys. Next time, we'll cover the four sections of live-action films, literature, live-action TV, and tabletop games. Until then, thanks for watching. Hey, guys, and welcome to episode 20 of Tropecast. And we're going to be continuing our look At the first episode resurrection trope with the category of live action film.
So shall we? Jonah Hex's near-death experience at the hands of his arch enemy gives him the power to talk to the dead. Eric Draven is already dead at the beginning of the film adaptation of The Crow. He is resurrected early in the film, although in the film's chronology, he was dead for a year before being resurrected. Neo's death and subsequent resurrection by Trinity at the end of the first The Matrix movie is what triggers his The One powers for the following two movies. It was even foreshadowed earlier by the Oracle when she told him he was not the one and that it felt like he was waiting for something. Perhaps your next life? Literature Kate Griffith's fantasy novel A Madness of Angels or The Resurrection of Matthew Swift begins with its protagonist mysteriously waking up after having been dead for two years. Sandman Slim. While he doesn't while he wasn't technically dead, the series kicks off with missing presumed dead James Stark crawling out of a cemetery after being in hell for a good eleven years. In the Gardens of the Moon, the first book in the Malazan Book of the Fallen One of the first things Gano Paran manages to do is get himself knifed in an alley by a god in disguise after no less than five gods show up to bicker over his corpse. Opon <clears throat> points out that as he was killed by a god, any god can resurrect him. This, of course, backfires almost immediately when Gano is the closest thing <coughs> the series has to a hero. Lamb begins with Biff being raised from the grave to write his own version of the gospel. Horace Piercy, having perpetual people gifted with resurrective immortality, begins with this sometimes. Vulcan's arc starts with him dying and turning out to be a perpetual ever since his first death. He keeps on dying and coming back to life, getting progressively more insane in the process. Old Parson tries his best to be regular Citizen Joe until orbital bombardment falls on his head, forcing him to resurrect apparently for the first time in his 30 millenniums old life. His death enables psychic John Grammaticus to contact him, setting him on his merry way towards heroic sacrifice. Mo Dao Zhu Shi opens with the protagonist Wei Wuxian's resurrection. Live action TV. Agent Coulson is revealed to have been resurrected in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. pilot. The circumstances of his resurrection are a mystery even to him early on. Trans Gemini dies in the pilot of Andromeda and comes back with no problem. No one can even figure out how it happened. Subverted in the pilot episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Jesse, Xander's other bestest ever friend, is captured, killed and turned into a vampire, setting him up as something of a recurring villain character. But then he is somewhat accidentally staked by Xander before the end of the opening two-parter. He's promptly never mentioned again, sorry Jesse. The series Dead Like Me begins with the main protagonist's death by by the way of a toilet seat from space station from space station near concluding its orbital re entry right on her head. She is brought back as a reaper 
Her replacement body can't re-die or age and seems to have abnormally fast healing, but it exhibits all other properties of a normal human being. Subverted in the film where the other Reapers try to take down a corrupt head Reaper who is playing with fate, they discover that he is incredibly hard to subdue, even when beaten, burned or, and drowned for several hours. Eventually they manage to cut him up, cremate him to ash, and have the ashes scattered into space so he can't regenerate. Doctor Who and Torchwood Except for the fact that he dies and is resurrected in the last episode of the season, Captain Jack Harkness fits this trope perfectly. His resurrection makes him immortal, which is a plot point in almost every subsequent Doctor Who episode he appears in, and several times a season in Torchwood. Of course, though his resurrection was at the end of a series, the fact that he's immortal isn't revealed until the premiere of Torchwood, when he's shot in the head and gets back up a few seconds later. The entire premise of Glitch is about a few people coming back from the dead, so naturally this trope applies. The first episode of Heroes shows that Claire is very resilient, being able to quickly heal from rather traumatic injuries. She finally gets killed due to having a tree branch jammed in her head, only to wake up on the autopsy table after the branch is removed, and reacts about how you'd expect her to. Claire's a special case, she got a healing factor. She's got a healing factor. She discovered three theories as well as a masochistic streak a mile long. We first meet her jumping off an oil tower over and over and painfully shoving her bones back into place. Or her friend videotapes it. Starmer in Hex is killed at the end of the first episode, then brought back at the end as a ghost. A ghost who, it transpires, can eat and manipulate physical objects, but is invisible intangible to the li and intangible to the living. She can go into their dreams though. Sort of in Eye Zombie, Liv narrates her rising medical career and dreamy engagement until she goes to a boat party which turns into a zombie outbreak. We then see her unzip a body bag and sit up. All pale and white haired since she's no longer alive, it's not technically a resurrection, but it can still apply. This is the entire reason why the show's called Carmen Rider Ghost. The hero is killed in the first episode, and he is handed a transformation trinket to allow him to fight ghosts as a ghost. From the only narration to the first episode of Lex, the Time Prophet predicted that I would be the one to destroy the Divine Order and the League of 20,000 Planets. Someday that will happen, but not today, as today is my day of death. Today our story begins. The main character in Now and Again starts as John Goodman, until he gets hit by a train and has his brain placed in an artificial body. Too bad his family doesn't recognise him now. Yeah, very too bad. The title character in Painkiller Jane dies in the first episode. She then comes back to life revealing a super healing ability, apparently blank. Chuck in Pushing Daisies. 
So her new life doesn't come with immortality or full powers. On the contrary, it's heavily implied that she is immortal. Digby, Ned's golden retriever, is past 20 as Friar the puppy and Friar the puppy. This probably applies to Chuck too. Word of God confirms that Chuck will not age. No word on death by other causes. Ned thinks she can die again. In the second season premiere, he says that just because he brought her back once doesn't mean she can't die from other things. And there's a reason he doesn't let Digby play in traffic. It all becomes rather horrifying when you think of all of all the frogs Ned brought back to life, not to mention the swarms of immortal bees. Probably one of the worst creatures to make immortal. Les Revenants features five of them in the pilot. Blank. Liz and Roswell get shot dead in the first episode and is healed by Alien disguised as shy high school student Max. The useful, in brackets, powers that come along with it, blank. Pretty much everyone who has ever combined with an ultra hero did so in this manner in the Showa series, though it's less common in the High Side series. Probably the most famous example within the franchise is Shin Hayata, who lost his life when he accidentally collided with Ultraman in mid-air, prompting the latter to merge their lives together, allowing Hayata to transform into Ultraman. Subverted in the first chronological episode of Ultra 7, Agent 340 witnesses a mountain climber named Jiro Basuma nearly falling to his death and saves his life, but doesn't merge life forces with him, instead modelling his human identity's appearance on Earth after Satsuma. A, that should be an unusual variant for a fra- for the franchise occurs in Ultraman Tiga, when Dago Madoka gets shot down while attempting to protect the ancient statue of Ultraman Tiga. Due to Tiga being an ancient ancestor of Daigo, or Daigo, they end up merging into a single identity, which simultaneously revives Daigo and allows him to transform into the restored Tiga. Okay. Now there aren't many more categories to go, guys. So the next categories will be tabletop games and video games. We have to do two in the next one, I'm afraid. So until then, thanks for watching. Hello, fellow tropers, and welcome to your 22nd episode of Tropecast and the final part of the first episode Resurrection trope and we're on to tabletop games guys tabletop games here we go
Dungeons and Dragons Dungeons and Dragons Third and Three Point Five Editions is a prerequisite for certain prestige classes. One, the Risen Martyr stands out for requiring the character to be raised by divine intervention, rather than by any of the quick and easy resurrection options available to player characters. Geist, the Sin Eaters. Sin Eaters are touched by weirdness in, early, in their early life, ranging from sensing the supernatural to knowing when someone's about to die. But it's not until they die that they come into power, as they end up at the front gate of the underworld, and the geist offers to bring them back to life. Pause. If they get to tag along in their body, that is. The old world of darkness. Mummy, the resurrection. Mummies have to die before becoming immortal and gaining their powers. Demon, the fallen. Demons don't always have to enter the world in this way. So long as the soul is basically withered and or absent, the body is fair game for a demon to take over. But this is one of the common ways it happens. Um, the abyssal exalted in exalted flirt with this trope. They flirt with it, eh? <laughs> what? While no actual resurrection occurs, they are brought back to vitality from the brink of death by virtue of exaltation, without which they would succumb. It is possible for a character to play a prologue for their exaltation theme. And all of all abyssal prologues inevitably involve this video game. In Kingdoms of Amalur, Reckoning, the Fateless One starts the game dead, but is resurrected by a machine created by a gnome to bring someone back from the dead. The titular character in Abe's Odyssey is killed in a cutscene after the first two levels, just as Big Face shows up to conveniently bring him back to life. Our main character of the original Ominusha Warlords, Samanasuki, Akeshi, 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 starts out the game as an ordinary samurai. Pause. Okay. Then he gets apparently, apparently in brackets, killed by a demon and is resurrected by the clan ogres, granted superhuman powers and proceeds to clean house Resident Evil style. Shepard dies in a cutscene at the start of Mass Effect 2 and is reconstructed right after the opening logo. Altered Beast begins with Zeus resurrecting your heroes, in brackets, to rescue his daughter. Wise from your grave. Oh, wise from your grave. You're killed soon after completing the Justify tutorial in Rune, only to be resurrected by Odin. Both Cain and Raziel the two main protagonists in the Legacy of Cain series started their respective games in this manner. In both cases their resurrections are Faustian bargains with the beings that arrange for their return and they're both all too aware of it. The tutorial of Demon Souls ends with your death. Fallout New Vegas begins with a cutscene of the court of the courier getting shot in the head. Whether it's played purely straight or lightly downplayed depends on whether the character actually died and was revived immediately afterwards by a quick acting doctor 
and potentially advanced future medical technology, or if a character was rescued from the brink of death by that doctor after sustaining injuries that should have been immediately fatal. Either way, other characters and the narrative will occasionally know that the courier rose from the grave. At the beginning of the Elder Scrolls Online, the Vestige wakes up in Cold Harbor, the plane of Diedrich, Prince of Domination, Molag Baal, and a loose equivalent of Hell, having been sacrificed by cultists of Molag Baal for the big bad's evil scheme. The tutorial is escaping from Cold Harbor back into Tamriel, Sans, your soul. Retrieval of your soul drives the main quest line, and lacking a soul provides certain benefits such as being able to revive at the nearest way shrine, at way shrine only a few extra dents in your armour or being immune to magic at that effect slash control slash seals the soul of its target, like the sort of magic commonly used by necromancers and the like. If you play as a Forsaken in the world of Warcraft, the storyline starts with your death and resurrection, in the crypt of Brill. As of Cataclysm, the Forsaken story now begins as a long dead corpse being reanimated by a Val Kyr. The beginning moments of a new Death Knight character are similar, except you wake up in Arthurus. In front of the Lich King prior to your heel face turn. The Demon Hunter starting zone gives you the option of sacrificing yourself or an NPC to power a portal. If you choose to sacrifice yourself, you get resurrected shortly after, being given an explanation of how you have the immortal soul of a demon like Illidan. The protagonist of the Flash game series, Sunny, died prior to the start of the first game, of what is unknown since Sunny doesn't remember any part of his life prior to death, including his name. In his new life, he is a zombie with extraordinary powers. Flood, you literally begin the game getting out of your grave. Medieval, Fortes, the fake hero of Galomir, is revived as a skeleton, and the only one of the undead to retain its independence from the big bad. The game's plot is all about defeating the evil necromancer while providing Fortes a hero at the same time. Proving even, sorry. Shadow of Destiny, you die three seconds in and are sent back to life. Very plot relevant since the game is about dying, reviving and then having to travel to the past in order to avoid the root cause of your death. Over and over again. Make us be immortal again. There <laughs> go. Okay. Oh dear. Actually, now I think about this, this is episode 21, sorry. But anyway. In the first scene of Maximo, Ghost to Glory, the kingly title character is unsurped and killed by the big bad and his queen is abducted. Fortunately for him, the Grim Reaper intends to make use of his talents. 
Subject Delta, the hero of Bioshock 2, dies in the opening cutscene. He then wakes up in a Vita chamber, the game's in-universe resurrection device. Planescape, Torment, plays with this, the nameless one, wakes up in a morgue. But that is not the first time you died, nor by not by a long shot. In the MMORPG Skyforge, you begin the game arriving at a big city, where in a flashback, you tell a god the story of how you died, and then revive, discovering yourself to be an immortal. It's the way in universe of how all immortals find out about their powers. It's kind of like Highlander then. <laughs> okay. The first chronological mission of Prototype has Alex Massa waking up during his autopsy and escaping the Gentech search facility subverted at that in that blank. Ori and the Blind Forest has Ori expire at the end of the prologue, but being the protagonist he is revived on the spot thanks to the spirit tree remaining magic. Pocket Cards Jockey begins when the protagonist is offered a new horse that proceeds to buck and kick them leading them to be trampled by more horses. Fortunately, an angel offers to revive them and provide them with the central plot mechanic of linking the horse's performance to the player's skill at golf solitaire. Shin Megami Tensei 4, Tensei 4 Apocalypse has the protagonist Namashi killed in a hopeless boss fight with a major demon not long after the game starts. It's like a final boss at the beginning of the game. What's going on here? He is revived afterwards by Dag uh, Dag Dagdos and will be every time a game over happens. But in turn, he must serve as the God Slayer and human puppet to Dagdos. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 involves Rex being killed by Jin during the first chapter after accidentally touching the Aegis sword. Hyra revives Rex using part of her core crystal and makes him her driver. Okay, the captain is killed from a Hydra attack in the beginning prologue to Grand Blue Fantasy, causing Lyria to create a life link with him, saving his life and giving him the power to summon primal beasts. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild begins with Link awakening in a secluded room called the Shrine of Resurrection with no memory or knowledge of where he is and he spends the rest of the game piecing together what happened that led him that led, led to him being there webcomic the webcomic anti-hero features the death of a character in the first strip and the beginning of her new unlife as a vampire in the second Sparkling Generation Valkyrie Yuki begins with the protagonist having a gem roughly the size of a fist shot directly into his chest, along with an accompanying huge spurt of blood and shocked expression. He's reborn instantly as a Valkyrie, but it seems a safe bet that, he, that this killed him which explains rather nicely why Hermit, that why Hermit isn't strong enough to reverse the process. Cherry, as pictured above, at the time going by her human name Charlotte, 
fast atomic school bites like this, arriving as an undead after being fed upon by a vampire. Hannah is not a boy's name uses this quote in a slightly non-standard way. The eponymous Hannah helps Comrade come back from the dead as a vampire in the first chapter, which is also Comrade's first appearance. He remains a supporting character and non-action guy. Why are they getting shafted then? Kajaru. Kano finds himself transported into a strange other world. Then promptly gets himself killed because he doesn't understand the local magic. Then a member of the supporting cast raises him from the dead. He doesn't turn into anything supernatural as a result, though, just gets put back the way he was. Also, this technically happens in the second chapter. In the prologue of Winglet, the protagonist is decapitated by a booby trap and then resurrected by an unknown, but presumed evil entity. In chapter one of Star Warriors, a fox kit named Esmeralda is killed by hunters while providing a diversion to let her family escape. Then the goddess of the stars asks her to leave the cycle of reincarnation and become a Star Warrior, defending the cosmic from dark matter. In the opening of Suicide Noun, the main character Ethan kills himself, though it's not revealed until Chapter 2 that he was resurrected. Web Original More like 8th episode resurrection, but Church's death in the first season of Red vs. Blue kicks off the entire plot by blank, and more directly by being the catalyst that led Tex to coming to Blood Gulch. It also gives him the only remotely useful ability he has, aside from taking responsibility when Tucker doesn't want to, which is always the ability to possess people. The first Carmilla story of the Waitley universe begins with famed horror writer Michael Waite dying of cancer and then waking up in the morgue and completing a horrific transformation into something which may not be human at all. Carmilla then has to deal with supervillains, Eldritch Abominations, and the fact that Michael Waite's best-selling horror fiction, Incongruity, is not fiction. It only takes poor Caro two episodes in Journey Quest to get shot full of arrows and then be incompetently raised from the dead by Perth. Unfortunately for Caro, the God of Light is purity, and purity doesn't, doesn't exactly like zombies. And finally, Western animation. Optimus Prime in Transformers Animated. He managed to cut the Prime death a new record by dying in the third episode, the three-part pilot, so it still counts, and being resurrected a mere 75 seconds later, that's going to be hard to beat. The eponymous hero of Jerry Anderson's new Captain Scarlet does this in the first episode, twice. Granted the first time left him under the control of a malevolent alien force bent on destroying the Earth, but still, and it was the second time via an electrical accident that rebooted his human side. The first Comedy Central episode of Futurama starts with every main character except Fry and the Professor dying when the Planet Express ship and the Nimbus Zap Branigan's ship 
explode. And the episode opens with the professor resurrecting them, with complications leading to Lily, Lily being resurrected in a comatose, uh, very long blank. When we first meet Cubix from Cubix Robot for Everyone, he's the mysterious trophy sitting around the body pit that no one has ever seen, oh, sorry, been able to fix. New Kid Connor decides to fix him for his initiation despite the fact that no one expects him to succeed. And that my friends is the F section of this series. So next up we move to the G's. There's only one section for that. Good morning, Chrono. Next time. Until then. Thanks for watching. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Trocast. This will be number 22, and we're on now the category of G. And good morning, Chrono is the only category and um, it's the only trope under this category so there are one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so that's twelve categories twelve folders of examples And we're going to cover in this episode the first four folders, starting with anime and manga. Spoilers ahead. Attack on Titan also starts with a prophetic dream. Though the content of the dream differs between the anime and the manga. Bleach. Ishin Kurosaki tries this on Ichigo a few times but is foiled. By the fact that Ichigo is already up and doesn't like being kicked in the face. Card captor Sakura wakes up from a prophetic dream at the beginning of the first episode, as well as many others before the end of the Crow card arc uh, of the Clo 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 card arc. Chrono Crusade starts this way as well, although with a bit of a twist. In the manga, Chrono is sleeping in a car when Rosette gets the call to go on a mission. When he's slow to get up, Rosette literally kicks him out of the car. In the anime, both Chrono and Rosette are asleep in their car when they get the call. Chrono wakes up first and gently wakes up Rosette. Since since his worried sister Kate won't speak to him. XL Saga Episode 4 in its parody of dating sims has this. XL looms over the bed telling the player to wake up or they will be late for school. In the game 2 Palazu kills XL before even leaving the room because she lied to force him out of bed, earning a bad ending. High Bane Reme starts with a dream of the main character 
that the main character has immediately before hatching from her cocoon, and spends most of the first few episodes having the world of Highbane explained to her, as she has no memory of who she is or where she's from. The borderline kid hero of Last Exile, Claus, is introduced to us under his guideline. He's a hell of a pilot, but it takes multiple strikes on a battered sheet of steel slash iron to get him awake so he can inadvertently change modern warfare as Presta knows it. Magical girl lyrical Nanoa, first scene, has Nanoa being woken up by her cell phone, which apparently has a built in alarm clock. Yeah, like all mobile phones, eh? And her father notes he's impressed that she's able to get up on her own. Neon Genesis Evangelion. Spoofed in the final episode of the series, Shinji is shown a vision of an alternate life for himself, in which his life is more like a typical shonen series, including being woken up by Asuka. This is exactly how Neon Genesis Evangelion Angelic Days, well, even spin-off manga starts. Which makes sense, as said manga takes place in the same alternate universe, which is explicitly stated to be a real alternate universe. Parodied in in Orimo, Kayasuke gets woken up by his mildly sundre little sister in a stereotypically cute fashion, but he immediately realises this is implausible, and right after a title drop he wakes up for real, having fallen out of bed while dreaming about his little sister waking him up. Okay. Pokemon. The anime begins this way, with Ash oversleeping and being late to get a Pokemon from Professor Oak. Although missing the first Three is how he ended up with Pikachu. Pokemon Adventures, Gold's introduction in this arc, being woken up for some errands. Parodied in the first episode of Pop Team Epic anime, of the Pop Team Epic anime, with Papuko, yet yeah, Papuko wakes up and hurries to school. Only to crash into Pipimi. Pipimi lends her a hand while the background turns into your name's poster. But but Papuko ruins the mood and a nuclear bomb goes off, resetting her back to bed. This time Papuko crashes into Pipimi right outside her house and gets killed for refusing to hand her back her pendant. Papuko wait, then wakes up yet again, but she's now in a hut in the wilderness all of a sudden and... Hmm. Yeah. Princess Tutu opens with a hero opening, no, having a nightmare and tumbling out of her bed. Project A Co. starts with just this trope, moreover, because she has superpowers, she does a lot of collateral damage rushing to school. Puella Magi Madoka Magica starts with an action prologue, which turns out to be all just a dream, and becomes a good morning chrono after a few episodes. It switches to or was it a dream the title character from Sailor Moon 
when Minato got an episode centered on her during the first anime's R season, it also started with her sleeping in. The Twelve Kingdoms begins with Yoko having a dream about a strange man, an important character who continues to taunt her for much of the first arc. X 1999 also begins with a prophetic dream, really a few moments of the dreamer's next day at school. Yuru Yuri begins with Akari, that means um, angry by the way, hitting the snooze button and going back to bed, until Kyoko, not that one, abuses the doorbell, jarring her out of bed and making her realise she's going to be late for school. The disappearance of Nagato Yuki-chan. The first scene involves Ryuko waking a sleeping Yuki in a painful fashion. Twat! 21 Amen. Episode 1 begins with 21 Amen. Waking up, I think that's Eamon, he's told multiple times to wake up before he finally falls out of his bed and wakes up. Jewel Pet Magical Chain After the prologue, with the seven years old It and Irie, we meet her as 14 years old, we meet her 14 years old self. Who wrote this? Waking up to her alarm clock. You don't say years old when you're talking about a person in the in that sense. It's year old. Anyway, comic books. There's only one example here. Superman storyline Bizarro Girl starts out with Supergirl waking up from a nightmare. Fan work. In Thousand Shinji, the story's second half begins after a time skip, when Shinji wakes up from a coma, and Rei informs him that everything has gone to hell in his absence. The second try, Shinji and Asuka's Tegisu adventures begin, when they wake up and realise they've gone back to the past. Likewise, doing it right this time, some of the time travellers take it more calmly than others. Warp begins with Victoria Dallin waking up on her bed as an, in his old room. Four years in the past. The Legend of Zelda Book of the Traitor Chapter 2. The chronological start of the hero's adventure starts with Link waking up from a nightmare. Kirby of the Stars, the after story. After the prologue, the story opens with Kirby being woken up by Fumu and Bun. Worm, the DCU crossover, Echoes of Yesterday. Starts out with Supergirl coming around and noticing she's lying on a dumpster instead of sleeping in her bed. Second Bloom. Starts with Sakura. Get, starts when Sakura gets out of bed. Kara or Rockin. Kara and the Dreamsmith. The chapter, which kicks off the proper fan birth, begins when Dream of the Endless wakes Kara Zor-El up. How Sister Trilogy's second story arc starts out with Devem. Being, wo being awoken by his girlfriend. Chrono Trigger self-insert fat fix a step onto Chronos. Starts with, starts when the main character's alarm clock sounds. Okay. Uh, I said four each. So we're going to end this episode by looking at the examples in animated films. And there's only one. Kung Fu Panda. 
done to Poe at the beginning of the movie when his dad wakes him up from a dream and tells him to wait tables. What a douche. Anyway. That's it for this episode. In the next episode we cover the categories of live action films, literature, live action TV and theatre. Until then, thanks for watching. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 23 of Tropecast. And in this episode we're going to cover the categories, these four categories from live action films to theatre. Are we ready? Good, then I'll begin. So, picking up on where we left off, live action films. Apocalypse Now. Saigon shit! I'm still only in Saigon. A quote from the film. Being there opens with chance the gardener being awakened by his television set. As the opening credits roll, we watch him as he gets up, tends to the garden, where there is a TV in the greenhouse. Watches TV, back up in his bedroom, and then goes down and waits for breakfast watching TV. While he does so, as Chance is a middle-aged man, this also serves as a good introduction to exactly what kind of person he is. And then the plot kicks in, when the maid tells him the master of the house is dead. And gammon! The film starts with Jan and Eva waking up, to start a new day. Literature. The introduction to 10 year old Harry Potter in both the book and film version involves him being woken up by his arm banging on the door of the cupboard he sleeps in, demanding he make breakfast for his cousins. Even before that, when we are first introduced to Harry, he is happily sleeping in Hagrid's arms, ending up woken by Aunt Petunia's shriek when she opened the door to put out the milk bottles. The death of the Vaser Mukta begins with the main character waking up in his family's house in Moscow, having arrived there from Persia the day before. He then goes on social calls. Mother of Learning. Zorin's loop always begins with his little sister jumping on top of him and shouting, Good morning! Repeatedly, Afterglow begins with Josie waking up from a nightmare a few hours before she's supposed to. Live action TV. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, this is the only example, wakes from dreams about monsters and rivers of blood to her mother Joyce telling her to get up before she's late for her first day at Sunnydale High. In theatre, Dream Girl begins with Georgina being woken up by an alarm clock followed by her mother calling her to get up. She then briefly listens to a radio program that drives her into another daydream. Which ends with her mother calling her again. Her age is 23 going on 24 however. Pokemon Live begins with Ash sleeping in and Pikachu shocking him awake. Okay, the last four categories, video games, web comics, web original and web an animation, will be covered in the next episode. Until then, thanks for watching.